Hi Libra, welcome to your August 2017 Astro Update. It's Rena here in the soft spoken voice because it's late at night. And I write out the forecasts in advance so that I can um, tell you what houses everything is in. And I'm like, I can't believe how much concentration of energy there is in your 11th house. And I have to believe when there is such consistency here that it makes it more likely to transpire in some way for you. Of course, I can't guarantee that, but um, sometimes when you have a certain month, there is a lot of different stuff going on and different houses being activated. But in this case, there is a lot of consistency and it's in your 11th house of hopes and wishes. So as far as I'm concerned, this being the luckiest house, I feel that for a lot of you, this could be a very important month as well as a very satisfying month and even joyous uh, possibly because the 11th house as your hopes and wishes, what it means is that it is your long-term goals. It is your house of friendship. So the people that are part of your social network. And for Libra, this is actually something that a lot of you are really all about is a large social network. You are very much the social butterfly. The other thing too about the 11th house is groups, you know, the associations that you have. And again, some of you enjoy groups that have to do with political issues or uh, maybe some of your social justice warriors. Uh, some of you may belong to some kind of artistic association, maybe even something to do with music or drama and or something related to beautifying yourself. You know, I'm, I'm thinking of all these Venusian or Libran kinds of activities. But let me just go through some of what is going on for you in August. And I hope that this can get your juices flowing, especially if you're listening before August begins. So the sun will be in your 10th house of career most of the month until August 22nd when it does go into Leo. With the sun in the 10th house, it can be a great time for achievements in your career or any kind of recognition, perhaps. I, I would even include ambition in that where you are kind of reaching the heights of um, whatever it is that you have set your sights on. And then it goes into your 11th house and the sun there, you become ambitious for long range goals. So what is the difference between the 10th house and the 11th house? Well, your career has to do with maybe I would say some of your worldly goals of utilizing your talents and marrying them to your areas of life that, um, you're looking for, for the money that you earn, you know, your career is not something that you're doing as volunteer work. You're doing it in exchange for compensation. And so utilizing your talents in exchange for compensation 
is the ultimate career goal, obviously, because you want to feel, and also your interests, obviously, but they tend to dovetail, don't they? And so in that case, you can have that perfect career because you're going to be doing something that you enjoy doing and that you're good at doing. And that tends to be very satisfying. Some people, let's say some people are good at science, but they want to be an artist. You know, these kind of things do happen. You can be good at two completely diverse areas, but one of them you have a passion for and the other one you don't. And this is where the 11th house comes in because it's your hopes and wishes. And so you may, you know, with the sun in both of those houses during the month of August, this may be something that you really think about. And I'll get into more of why I think you're thinking about that, talking about Mercury retrograde, because Mercury is your the way that you think, and it's also um, dealing with the area in life that you're thinking about. And in August on the 12th, Mercury will be in Virgo. Virgo is your 12th house of the woo, the mystical, um, the buried issues that you don't want to deal with on, on the surface of life. Mercury can be past life, karmic stuff. And so it retrogrades, and that means it's going back in degrees and on the 31st of August, it goes so far back that it goes into the former sign of Leo. And this is your 11th house once again. So yet another transit in the 11th house, but it's a retrograding planet. So it's about rethinking the issues of the 11th house, your hopes and wishes, which are your long-term goals and friendships. Now, what this can mean is that you you really have to surround yourself with people that you kind of resonate with at this present moment. I was just reading this quote today that related to the people that you surround yourself with and how they can drag you down and stuff like that. I probably shouldn't have said it was a quote because you're expecting me to actually quote it and I can't. So the gist was that if you're around people that have this, you know, negative mentality, it can't help but rub off on you. And you may, you may realize this because in the 12th house, the 12th house is also known as the house of undoing. And this means, you know, self-destructive tendencies. And so when it goes back into the 11th house, you're reflecting between and connecting the dots between your self-destructive tendencies and possible friendships. And you may see that these people have an, an influence on you. And I think like with... Libra, there's a tendency to kind of go along to get along. And sometimes that can include being influenced in behavior by other people. So it is a good thing to do to always reflect upon um, whatever it is that is coming up for review. And I think you're going to do that. And I think that it for some people, it can even be past life stuff in terms of what it is that you're pursuing. And you might say to yourself, am I doing this for myself or I'm doing this for somebody else? It could be a parent. It could be a, um, a spouse, you know, a partner. And you're, you're doing something, either you're 
doing something career wise or just another major um, decision that you're making that may not be your own personal desire, but somebody else that you want to make happy. And you realize that you're not happy and you have to follow your own dreams and know very distinctly what is yours and what is somebody else's dream. So Mars, which is all about action and ambition and sex drive and physical attraction, is going to be in Leo all month long. 11th house much? There you go again. And um, so in the 11th house, Mars can indicate, um, oh, you know, Mars can be anger, how anger is expressed, but also, you know, in this case, it could be conflict. And this could be within your circle of friends in some cases, a group that you belong to. But here again, when you're having this review of your friendships, there may be something that comes up where you have to dis disassociate with that, um, from them, and that can stir up conflict. And for Librans, this can be very unsettling because that's exactly what you don't want to do. But what I have found that is peculiar about Librans is how much drama some of you attract when you claim um, and swear up and down that you're totally not about drama. And while I'm on that subject, and please uh, forgive me for this, one thing that always irritates me uh, and I don't know if every single person who does this is a Libran, but I bet you they have it somewhere in their chart, is when people are, you know, you're having a conversation and you, you know, may like to debate, like I like to debate people and I am not afraid of dissent. I'm not afraid if somebody disagrees with me. It actually gets my juices flying. And we might even get a little bit heated. I'm a fire sign. I'm a Sagittarian. And I'm like, bring it, you know. I'm not, I'm not afraid of conflict. And you'll get this one Libran person who always tries to control things by saying, okay, you guys, you know, just leave it alone and stuff like that. And that, <laughs> that's, I always, I don't like when people try to act like it's so horrible to have a difference of opinion. And so in this, I'm bringing that up because you may find yourself on the, the warrior end of things where you're the one on the war path for some reason. And you may feel uh, a strange justification for it. Um, perhaps somebody betrays you or has betrayed you in the past and you're confronting them. Um, but the other thing too is you may just be on fire in terms of a goal that you have that, who knows, maybe it's something that during the first new moon, it just kind of blossomed within you. And now it's your passion, it's your life's passion, and you're doing everything you can uh, to make it happen. And when there is the solar eclipse on August 21st, and that is, I think it's around 28 degrees of Leo, that might be a time when things just start falling into your lap more easily because the the eclipses are kind of like some something leaving or coming in, but it implies that it's on like a wave. It's not really you exerting your effort 
as would normally happen when we have things go our way, let's say, and we, um, so maybe that first new moon on July 23rd is the planting of the seed, and then you see it flowering around the time of the new moon on the 21st, and it's like a dream come true. Um, but I mean, it's just like, the hits just keep on coming, you guys. Venus in Leo on the 26th of the month. So that means that for most of the month, Venus is in your 10th house of career. Now that ain't too shabby either. Venus in the 10th house can mean that you have a certain aura about you that makes people that are your superiors much more attracted to you as a worker and in whatever your field is, you may uh, come across in the best way possible because, of course, Venus is about beauty, but beauty is not just physicality. It's, it's also uh, charm. Uh, some people may not be the most gorgeous person on the planet, but they have a grace. And um, so this is the kind of thing that Venus bestows upon people who have this in, in that particular sector where it can benefit you in advancement of your career and in dealing with higher ups if you're looking for a job for instance or you're looking for a promotion um, Venus can also bring money with her so that can increase your your um, salary your uh, wage so that's going on most of the month and then it goes into your 11th house and again somehow funds can show up for you to make your dreams come true in some way. Perhaps you were thinking it was going to take you a lot longer than it does. I mean, this could be a manifestation month for you with all these plants in the 11th house. Um, a magical manifestation month. Yeah, I think I'm going to call it that because that has a lot of alliteration. So... Um, I did mention the new moon in the 11th house, new beginnings in your hopes and wishes coming true. And that sounds like, you know, some kind of a fairy tale, doesn't it? What I'm talking about is your heart's desire. Okay. And your heart's desire is something that you think about and you stoke like a like we do if if we have a fire and we take a stick and we we make the fire um it's in these embers and it it kind of relights the log so to speak that's what that's what um dreams are all about and dreams are not something that we do that is is uh What's a what's a good way of um, of um, putting it that most people think of of dreams as um, pie in the sky maybe where it's something that can't possibly happen that is where we need to flip the script we need to stop acting like dreams are fruitless. I think that was the word I was looking for. Dreams are the seeds of manifestation. You know, when you want something to happen, you first have to dream of it. And that is how you get the ball rolling. So definitely with that new moon, um, really take some time out and see what shows up for you in terms of like when you open yourself up to your 
wildest dreams. Maybe there will be a theme. Maybe it's a theme of peace. Maybe you want to live a certain place that represents peace to you versus where you live now. And maybe you want to have a certain type of relationship that kind of exemplifies um, whatever your values are, whatever your temperament is like, and you want somebody who, or your interests, you want somebody who shares your interests, whatever. But what is so beautiful, I think, in August for you is that we have all that stuff happening, and we have the North Node in Leo as well, and this is soul stuff, this is your soul's mission. And the North Node is something that is not talked about um, probably nearly enough in terms of your overall life path or the purpose of your life. Um, I do private readings just on the life path, and the North Node is a big part of that because a lot of times we can overemphasize career. When you think about it, and I think this is a good connection to the month of August for you guys, is that we need money in our society because that's the way it's set up. It, it hasn't always been that this way or that way. And so we do certain things to get money. Some of those things may be in alignment with our talents and our interests. But some people do things that they're not interested in at all. I call those people heroes because they may be trying to raise a family or they may be trying to be responsible citizens or productive citizens and they go to jobs that they don't like. But this is a month for all of you to think about your ideal life and how you can tie it all together because I don't think it's a coincidence that the North Node is tying into this, um, you know, by being in the same sign as these two new moons in Leo in July and August for you. Maybe it's a new beginning, Libra, in you becoming more aligned with your purpose in life and also with the joy in more moments of your life. I want to leave with one last transit, and I probably should have said this earlier because, you know, I should have gone in chronological order, but this is actually on the seventh of the month, and it's going to be a full moon in Aquarius, a fellow air sign to you. Now, Aquarius is your fifth house of romance, creativity. Oh, hello. This is Leo's natural house. So there is that Leo connection. Not that um, the full moon is in Leo, mind you, but this is the house that Leo rules, the fifth house. So anything that we associate with Leo, children, uh, creativity, love, you know, the romance phase especially. Even conceiving children is this house. S uh, recreational sex. But the full moon here can either be a realization about somebody that you are dating now. It could be that you end a dating relationship with somebody. Maybe you realize that you're not, you're just not that into them. It could be finishing a creative project. It could be birthing a creative project. It could be conceiving a child. And it could be falling in love. And this would be kind of like um, perhaps you have been talking to somebody or even dating them, but you weren't sure. And then all of a sudden it just expands into this amazing um, feeling that is 
larger than life, perhaps. And you take it from there. But this is an eclipse. I hope I, I said that. I think I just said it was a full moon. This is an eclipse. So sometimes, um, rather than just the typical definition of a full moon, we do look at things leaving. And in the fifth house, it would probably be something related to a creative project. Um, maybe you're finished with it, and now it's ready to share with the public. Or um, maybe giving birth, and that sort of thing. Um, maybe beginning a new business. Now, this is right before the Mercury retrograde, so you might um, get in under the wire, but um, that's that birthing process. Perhaps you're starting a new business, and it's finished with the planning stages. But I just see so much good juju for you, um, Libra, and I hope that it's you know a really great month for you in 2017. So I hope you enjoyed this, and if you'd like a private reading, I do natal chart interpretations, um, as well as, of course, a whole bunch of other different types of readings. I'm promoting that because um, it's a pure astrological reading, and I do offer a discounted um, rate on that. It's an hour-long reading, so it's a longer reading. And um, you can check out my readings by going to rainamoonastrology.com. I have the link below. Otherwise, let's see what happens, Libra. Bye.